Welcome growth seekers and freedom fighters to the Grow To Be Free podcast. I'm your host, Kiani Williams, and it is my goal to help you reach your fullest potential through listening to the stories of real women who have broken through a new level of life. And so listen in and take notes because you're going to learn so many practical and tangible tips to help you grow to your fullest potential in business and in life. So let's get to it. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Grow to Be Free podcast. I am so excited today to introduce to you Miss Angel Wynn. Angel is a TV film director and editor, a commercial editor, a photographer, a creative director, and a program director for the Wynn Network. And she also recently came out with a bomb single <laughs> paired with a, a super cute music video that you really <laughs> need to check out. If you want to check that out, I know you can go to her Instagram and take a look at that Um, but she's a very talented person and super creative and so I'm really excited to bring her onto the podcast to share a little bit about her story where she's come from and and where she's going as well and I think she has so much value to bring especially if you're a creative out there she's the one to to listen to so Angel I'll hand it to you okay first I want to say sorry for the crying my sister's daughter is here (laughs) So, wow, I've always been creative. Fun fact, I actually wanted to go into culinary and become a baker, open up a bakery. I never really imagined being in production. That was always my passion. I had like little bakery that I would sell cupcakes and stuff at church. And <laughs> and it was like just what I thought I would always do. And my father came to me one day because I would always just have my hands dabbled in everything, whether it's gardening or baking or or just doing home decor. Chip and Joanna is just like everything to me. I would show him different things that I would do. And he told me when I was 13 that he's not going to allow me to just go to any school or just do anything, but he's going to nurture that gift that God has given me. So that excited me. You know, it kind of put a little purpose in me that I felt I was worth something. And when I was 18, I had the opportunity to start editing just different talk shows that were starting off. So I would edit them, but I also would go on set and help film. And I did that for a few years and it was just small. I started off in Pinnacle. If anyone knows that is, it's just this basic editor um, system on like windows and different, different things like that. And then I moved up to the big boys, which I thought was Final Cut. I was so scared. I was so scared to use Final Cut because I'm like, I'm not used to this. But yeah, so I went slowly but surely just kept progressing to different softwares and different opportunities from talk shows, moved on to bigger scales of commercials and music videos, and then finally feature films. So I was never expecting to be in that field. But yeah, I guess it was just something that God really wanted me, you know, to go through or to do. Wow, that's incredible. I I think it's really amazing that this almost all was inspired from what you were told as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Like it sounds like you still kind of carry those words with you even to this day. The Wind Network actually is family owned. My my father started the company about five years ago. And I started as just putting the different movies and TV shows on the platform because you can watch it for free. It's just like a Netflix or a Sling or Hulu or anything like that. And so I work really close by him. So anything he says, it does carry a weight to me. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's really incredible. And I think you're super blessed to have a father who's that supportive and and he must be super grateful to have a daughter who's walking in his footsteps as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. awesome. So tell me about the challenges that, that you've had in this career so far and, and tell us a little bit about how you've been able to overcome them. I think the most challenging thing is majority I am self-taught. I never went to a film school or anything like that. I've been shadowed or I shadow different individuals in the industry and went to different uh, production companies and learned how to cut different films correctly. But it was never a like, okay, you're going to go to school for four years and figure this stuff out. So the challenge is really like, God, can you help me out? (laughs) Because like, I'll watch videos on YouTube and stuff like that, or just try to comprehend what the people want when it comes to if they're asking for a commercial, your job is literally to have endless ideas of how to 
make their commercial one of a kind or their cut their show correctly or their film have it um, have the emotion and the feeling that it's supposed to have but overcoming that I would say early on God told me to give my work back to him so when I work worship like listen to worship music or just meditate on him and he'll give me because he's the creator of the universe so if he can create all of that we as creators we have a sense of him in us so he wants to refill that back into us So he really is just a huge factor in my whole career of giving me new ideas and helping me understand what I'm doing. Oh, I love that. You, you, you brought up something just now I am enjoying, I've heard people talk about this before in, in the faith realm of like, I want to be able to co-create with God. And it sounds like, yeah. how, how, what does that look for, look like for you? And, you know, is there some sort of process that you take with God or is there like a certain mindset that you need to be in certain setting? Like how, how does it look like for you? Yeah, I definitely believe that it all for me works in isolation because if I'm around too many people, or if I'm around too many voices or too many inputs, the project becomes very chaotic. And I have so many different things in my mind and I'm trying to please everyone. But when I'm alone, I work best at night when I edit, like when everyone is asleep or everyone is out of the office, I work best because it's just me. And then God can like feed me just different ideas. And it's not like a huge, like a voice in my head. that's just like, Oh, do this, do this. But it's like, when you make yourself available to God to use you in any way, then he can move through you. So it will start off with me just like, Before I work, be like, God, I give this work back to you. You show me what to do and how to do it. And then I'll put on some worship music while I'm finding the footage or looking through different things. And then I'll cut it off and say, okay, let's go. (laughs) And then somehow, because I opened myself up to him, he just like flows through me. And yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, that's how it works. (laughs) Yeah. sounds like you're really led by the spirit. Yeah. 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 And I, I I think for people who might not come from the Christian faith, maybe this could be described as like a flow state, maybe. Yeah. But then too, if you aren't familiar with it, the other things that do help is because I've been in it for so long, I'll learn from other projects. I'll learn, okay, a cut worked best on this last project. Maybe it'll work on this one too, or trial and error so much when you fail so many times you learn how to just fix stuff or maneuver differently. And that is one thing that does help as well from past experiences and then just trying out new things, trying out a different cut or watching a movie that I enjoyed or seeing a perspective from someone else, some other editor or just influential person that has had uh, their take in film. I definitely, I search all areas. So yeah, I'm not just, gonna go in there blind and be like all right god it's just me and you (laughs) i do kind of just educate myself in different ways like that too gotcha yeah and that that makes a lot of sense so when you were first getting started and learning all this stuff like you said that you you've gone to different production companies and you know different different places in the industry so did your dad kind of like guide you and like help you down like to find like the right production companies, et cetera, to start learning this? Or were you kind of like, I'm going to take ownership over my career and start doing it kind of on my own? We were actually working on a feature film that's now on Tubi and Amazon Prime called Mirror Mirror, John Wins Mirror Mirror. And that process, there was different people in the industry that you get connected to while you're making a film. So there was producers and there was writers and directors. So there was a producer that introduced me to um, a company called Kappa Studios and they're in Los Angeles and they are a production company. They do edits, they do coloring, they do sound design, anything you name it. They've done films like God's Not Dead and just different th- things like that. So the great thing about them are they are faith-based and the owner, Paul, is literally the sweetest person in the world and all of the workers there. And they took me under their wing because the producer that introduced me to them knew that I needed help in certain areas. And they took me under their wing for a few weeks and just taught me different things that I should know for feature films. And feature film is, for those that don't know, it's pretty much just a 90 minute film. It's just a movie, but that it, it carries a lot of weight. 
So rather than a short film or a TV show. So, yeah. Yeah. So the other thing that I wanted to ask you too, is when it comes to like self-development, are you into that at all? Like, yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. <laughs> what kind of self-development have you been doing and, and ha- what effect has that had on where you are today? Self-development. I really think it's having a time to where you can just be by yourself and speak back to yourself some, you know, because your voice in your head is pretty much the one that's driving you to do all the things that you're doing. So just taking time, getting some coffee or just like getting your nails done and then just reading the word, but just really asking God for me personally, it's what do I do? How do I better myself? What decision should I make? Like, because there's opportunities that's uh, approached to me very often and I could take a bad one and it can mess up my whole career, mess up my spiritual journey and all that stuff. So it's really asking God for me personally, what should I do? But I love influential women. I love women like Priscilla Schreier or Sadie Robinson or just uh, Sarah Jakes, women that are like devoted to God and devoted to their families and to themselves. That is like, I literally like will just write down just different things that they do or or books that they're reading and stuff like that that will help me on my journey. But I'm still learning, girl. <laughs> I am still learning on what to do. That is one thing in production. Being young and a woman, production sucks you in. Like it's really made for men. <laughs> And you're there like long hours. So you never really have time for yourself. So in this season, I am working on taking out time to develop myself more. Wow, I love that. And I'm glad that you brought that up about, you know, being a woman in a predominantly male industry. I I didn't really realize that, but that does make sense. And so like for for you, when you're like, oh, well, I need to make time for myself and how to prioritize myself. I guess my first question is, is do you ever feel a little bit behind because your male co-workers like they just can do things a little bit easier in a way or does that thought ever cross your mind it you know it's really interesting because I think we all have our own creative niche and I'll see something that they don't see and they'll see something I don't see and it's it's really like we kind of rub off on each other we teach one another because what I learned as a woman we tend to look at detail more because it's like, especially like in photography, because I also do that. I look at, you know, because it's like, I want a girl to be confident when she's taking the picture. And I, if I see she's not confident, we're going to make some adjustments to make sure she feels comfortable in that position, whether she's acting or, act, or, or taking a photo or a man, he'll just be like, all right, we got to do this scene <laughs> and you need to come on. Or like, okay, just stand there and take this picture and move, you know, adjustments. But I think women have very detailed eyes, even like, like when it comes to like home decor, just different things, hair, makeup, women can see things differently than men. And I think that is the niche that I have. And they have skill too, but it's just different. That makes any sense. So no, I'm not really intimidated. I I learn from them and then I teach them too. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. You go, girl. You teach them. <laughs> awesome. You're going to kick their butt. That's what I think. <laughs> hey, popping in here to let you know that growtobefree.com is now live. It's a gorgeous website, so please be sure to check it out right now and give me feedback. The website will allow you to email me, watch any of the episodes, and access our tools and resources. And that leads me to another exciting announcement. Our first tool is the Ambitious Peace Journals. These are for all you ambitious ladies who journal to keep your inner peace, the entrepreneurial gals like myself who have one million brilliant ideas, and for the young lady in school to take notes on. And they're smaller in size so they can fit in a standard purse and have modern trendy designs on the cover. Inside, they're college ruled with enough space to free write, doodle, and take notes. The special thing about them is that I hand selected 300 inspirational, motivational, and encouraging quotes to go on every single page, some of which are uniquely taken from the episodes of this podcast. So you can pre-order yours for 20% off at growtobefree.com. Just pop over to the tools tab and place your order for the style or styles 
that you like most. The 20% off pre-sale ends August 6th, so jump in there before the prices go up. And again, thank you so much for your support. Back to the episode. Is one of your goals to become like a director of like a certain type of film or is there like a certain amount of films you want to do? Like, what are your like big, hairy, audacious goals? Yeah, I really desire to become a director, but I believe you have to start off on all things. You learn everything, you know, serve before you can lead. But there is a few movies that I have under my belt that I would like to see manifest. So that's my goal to see one of the films that I have created. And if I can direct it, that would be like so awesome to me. And then people will be changed and like uplifted or encouraged by it or just laugh. Like that's, that's my goal to impact people and for them to stick around for whatever else I have up my sleeve. Ooh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, Ooh, what kind of genre of movie do you like the best? Yes, I love comedy. Okay. Comedy mm-hmm. and like rom coms. I like everything to me. I don't really like scary movies. Dramas are cool, but it's the comedy. Like, even like if you add like drama to the comedy, just make the comedy the base. Like, Adam Sandler is my favorite. He's my heart. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely agree. His, his older movies are definitely like A1. I don't know what's yes. going on with the newer ones. <laughs> We can talk about that another day. <laughs> exactly. You know, I don't know the facts. I'm sure maybe you know the facts, but how many female directors are there in the industry about? You know, there there are a good amount. I think the thing is there's not too many African American females, but there are a lot of women. Have they been showcased too often? I don't think so, but They are definitely like I have so many friends, so many women friends that are directors that have incredible work, but they're not recognized by it. So, yeah, I think for me, the niche would be I'm a young African-American director woman. (laughs) That's about it. But yeah, there are a good amount. I'm not sure about the number either, though. Okay. Okay, well, it's good to know. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure either, but you know, I'm glad to hear that there are a lot out there, and you know, hopefully, they start to get more recognized because I think that's super yeah. important as well. Yeah, yeah. And then there's another thing that I want to dive into that will help the listeners. And so, uh, about the creative professions out there, you know, obviously, being in the entertainment industry. Some people might give you some some criticism of be saying like, oh, why would you do that? It's super, super competitive or it's really hard to get into. You might not make any money, you know, the types of comments like that that might discourage you or discourage somebody from going into a creative type profession. What would you say about those types of comments? I will say anyone won't believe anything that doesn't have success or money starting off. Like no one really sees the vision unless God has given them some type of eye to see it. No one will see the vision God gave you or the passion you have. So you got to It's a it's a lonely road, but you got to ignore it. And it's tough sometimes too to just rush off people's comments because, you know, I've had people say you should just go back to like go to school. Like do they tell you logical things, but faith and dreams and goals aren't logical. (laughs) Like faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. There is no logic in that. Okay. (laughs) I don't know how we're operating. (laughs) So if anyone is trying to defer you from that, don't downplay yourself and say, maybe they're right. Maybe I can't. You got to, you never know until you try. So I think that's me trying and me pursuing all the things that I believe even there's dreams and goals I still have that I still got to try and keep going and, and don't let myself talk me out of it too. Cause yourself, you get tired and you know, don't want to do it, but you just got to push, just keep going. Mm, yes. I love that so much. Yes. Yeah. I love that you brought up faith when it comes to other people's criticisms, because 
I was thinking about this the other day, the whole idea of like other people, they talk very logically. And Mm. sometimes when you think about their, their comments in your own head, you're like, wow, well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But what, but what sometimes you have to have this argument with yourself and you're like, okay, well, what they're saying is making sense, but I want to believe that I can do this. And you should believe right. you can do this because they don't know what you can do. They don't know your story. They don't know your purpose on this planet. You, they don't know mm-hmm. anything. They don't know God's plan for your life. Mm-hmm. So how have you been able to really truly discern for yourself on, you know, which voice to listen to when you, when you have those conversations in your head? I think there's always a truth and there's always a lie in your head. And your the lie is always the doubt is always the self doubt. <laughs> the lie is always going to tell you to give up or unless it's like discernment, like you don't feel, you, you kind of feel uneasy about the opportunity or about the road that might be going down. And you know, that's not fear, but that's a warning sign. Like, I don't think you should do that. For me, it's just, I always pray in God's will. You say, Lord, if it's your will, show me if you want me to do this or give, open the door or make everything smooth because there could be times where opportunities are very rocky. It starts off rocky. The people are weird and rocky. And it's just like one thing after another, it's like, this isn't easy. Like there's a difference with something being a struggle, like hard. But then there's another thing when it's like nothing is going right. I don't think you should do that. You know what I mean? Like, of course, the enemy will try to throw things your way that might discourage you. But if like, I don't know, like if the people aren't right, if the spirit or the vibe, I don't know if the vibes are off, don't do it. (laughs) You know, I don't know. But yeah, just always trying to believe the truth. If there's any doubt in it, just believe the truth. Mm. That's so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, when the vibes are off. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like when there's like a friend or somebody and it's just like, mm, I don't know if I should like entertain you or even like in relationships. I don't know if I should talk to you because you don't really seem like, you know, I don't know. You know? <laughs> I say that exact phrase all the time. Like, I don't know, you know, (laughs) I literally do the same thing, (laughs) but like, yeah. So I discernment is so challenging. I feel like, because it's almost as if you just got to feel it. It's almost Mm -hmm. like you have to have that intuition and like that inner knowing of like, what's a good opportunity and what's a bad opportunity or not so good. I should just say, Mm -hmm. I can tell that you really understand what that means to you and like how you can really discern that. I know for some people, it might be a little bit challenging because they see everything as an opportunity. And if like an opportunity comes their way there, they might think like, oh, well, this could lead to something else, Mm. even though like, hmm, well, this particular opportunity, it feels a little bit weird, but you know, it can lead to something more or it can, you know, open some doors to something Mm. else. How do you balance that for your yourself and how do you kind of figure out you know what's the yeah. right path I think if it if it goes against my standards there's a project or if there is an opportunity that goes against my belief system or something that I'm not comfortable doing and it just keeps popping up I that is one way I know I'm not gonna do that because like there's just different things that you know as a person that you're not gonna cross and you have to keep that you have to stand firm in that and then if something does come that looks good if you aren't a type of person that prays honey you should try that but if you aren't the type of person that prays it's really just analyzing it for yourself if you really know all the black and the white and the and just the fine print of of everything with a person that wants to connect to you a business opportunity um, a new home that you want to uh, purchase or something like that you really have to look at it and see if you can handle them if you're okay with it and discern it first as that and then second if you are a believer you say god is this your will for my life should i do this should i go that direction and if that doesn't work honey we don't know (laughs) just just stay still (laughs) but for myself that's really what i do first it's my beliefs then it's asking god beliefs and asking god yes Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, beliefs could also be like your values. Values. Yeah. 
And if you don't know what your values are, we get a, you got to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta figure it out. Start, start, start with that. Just grab a notebook yes. or a journal and write down, you know, what are the things that you value? Do you value honesty? Do you value yeah. integrity? Do you value, I, I don't know, it could be a plethora mm-hmm. of things, but, you know, getting really clear on the, not only what you value, but like what type of work you want to be doing I think that's also very important because if you just like leave the doors wide open you know get whatever comes your way anything Anything and everything yeah you're right yeah Mm -hmm. exactly and so you know I I really love how grounded you are in your faith and like how it's really influenced your career there's something I'm very curious about is you know, with, when it relates to success and and how people are able to tap into their faith, is it like a chicken and the egg situation? In your life, have you mm. experienced like, oh, did I have the faith and then the results came or did the results start coming and you're like, oh, wait, I need more faith. Like, did it, like, did yeah. it occur to you that like, oh, well, it's because I believed like, it, like which one was intentional first for you? The faith. And I think that's everyone in success and in the industry, just like, you know, Walt Disney, it, it starts with faith because you don't see anything. No one sees anything at first. And that's when people start doubting. But for me, it was, a promise that God gave that he's going to lead me and guide me (laughs) and he has the plans for me, but the faith in knowing that my gifts will make room and that the projects will be successful and that opportunities will come. And, you know, all that faith brought opportunities and then it brought the results. So yeah, faith first. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so true. And I love that you said like no one ever, sees it first yeah. which I feel like is so true and and that is the exact time where people start to doubt because they don't see the results and they feel mm. like well I must be doing something wrong or this mm. this is probably not for me therefore mm. I should probably look into something else or start doing something else because I'm not seeing any success from it and so were there any points in your life where you were where you had to face the decision if you were going to quit or keep going yes (laughs) you want to quit all the time (laughs) you don't want to keep going it's just it's a lot of work faith and the industry itself but it's so much work encouraging yourself when others aren't encouraging you or believing in a word that could have been God, could have been yourself, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, definitely wanted to quit when the workload got too much. It wasn't even so much that things weren't opening up. That's the crazy part. It's when the work got too heavy, I, I said, God, I'm tired. I want to stop. But he said that this is where he has me. And I had to believe that this is where I'm supposed to be. So if I give up now, I'll just be giving in to just defeat. So I had to keep going. And it was recent. And then a few years back. <laughs> but yeah, you just got to keep going. Yeah. So the, the these conversations with God, they, they pop up every now and then. <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> it's just like, you know, God is supposed to be your friend. It's just a conversation. Hey, God, you know, I can't. He's just like, you can't, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, gosh, I, I love that you brought that up, that it, it's reoccurring, right? Like it's, it's not something you just have once and then you're done. Like, yeah. like there are some really successful people out there who want to quit very often. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So much. Have you ever come across a really successful director, producer, somebody in your industry that you've been able to learn from and glean from aside from your dad that has brought like some really great insights to you? Ernie Thomas, he was on what's happening. He's been in the industry for years and he would tell me I've had the pleasure to work with him on a few movies and TV shows. And he would tell me the stories that he experienced getting into the industry at a young age. But for him, it was all faith as well. And then there was challenges of believing like, 
okay, I know this is where I want to be, but no doors are opening and no one is like, like no, my career is not taking off. What do I do from here? And then he would tell me that if you just keep pushing, you keep going, you know, there's going to be a door that's literally has your name on it. And once you make it to that final door, because so many doors have shut in your face, once you make it to that final door, that's when everything's going to take off. And then Vincent M. Ward, he's on The Walking Dead and just so many different other shows. I call him Uncle Vince. (laughs) He is like... (laughs) He's just the best person to have around. To see good people still having smiles on their face, hearing all the stories that they've had in the industry of just people just using them or treating them any type of way, or, you know, even with money situations aren't coming the way they thought it was going to be. Seeing the smile that they have and then the, the humility and them being genuine is so inspiring to me to know that you can still be yourself in this industry. You can still keep who you are. It doesn't have to suck the life out of you. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to think of who else, but I think they were the main people. But I've worked with people like Judy Evans from Guiding Light and Tom Sizemore and Noel G from Fast and Furious, just different people. And then I'm working on another feature film this September with different people in there. And I can't say just yet, but yeah, I'm excited about that one. <laughs> yeah. I I love this. Well, yeah, this is awesome. And, you know, I I think one thing that tends to stop people in their tracks, whatever their career they're going for, is like self confidence. And especially for people in a creative type industry, you you always have to like put your work out there. You kind of have to like Mm. pour out your your heart into something that is, can be put up to criticism. So was confidence ever a challenge for you in, in your work and putting it out there? Yes. <laughs> I think I always nervous to show people your work. One thing someone told me is don't be married to your work because someone is always going to critique it or always want to change it. But the first thing that kind of helped me was I believe I was working on this talk show and I was really nervous about the edit with the producers that were going to look at it. And when they saw it, they were like, you're really good. I was like, and it was just that little thing. Them just saying, you're really good. Encouraged me to know, like, you know, someone's going to like it. Might not be for everybody, but someone is going to like my work. So, yeah. I love that. That's awesome. So you kind of like, you retained those little nuggets, those little seeds that people planted in you. And then- yeah, right. I'm a words of affirmation girl. You yes. tell me one sweet thing, I'll keep it in my heart forever. <laughs> oh, I love so, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I think that's I think that's a superpower, honestly, because like being able to hear one phrase, like even from when you were a kid, like that's fueled mm-hmm. you like up until this point, even even yeah. you know further into your career. And I think that's that's super important because people who might not graft on to words of affirmation yeah. like that stuff kind of like uh, goes in one ear out the other like I don't know how you get your confidence but <laughs> you might get it from <laughs> yourself, but I, <laughs> yeah. I think that's amazing that you can you can do that like you really do take it which is good well I guess we kind of covered it already but aside from like career related like oh you know maybe go back to school or you know uh, any of those other cr- criticisms how they're have there been any other types of criticisms that you've received? Maybe if it's even about your gender or, you know, just how, being how young you are in the industry, like what other criticisms are there that you've received and how have you responded to them? I believe that there is a project I was going to work on and I was going to be the main director on the project. It was a feature film. And I was already kind of nervous, like very nervous about being the main director on the project. And then I ended up going to this meeting with the producers of the project and the DP. And there was another director in the room. And they were like, okay, so she's going to direct this film. And we would like you to just maybe like be the assistant director, just, you know, help her out if she needs anything. And this guy, he has been directing so much. (laughs) some really like amazing films like major films and he was humble to it but he took offense to it and because he took offense to it he wanted to push offense on me and he pretty much was saying like I'm not going to sit under a young woman (laughs) 
like a young girl and, and have her direct, if I'm going to direct the project, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it with my team. And I was like, huh, <laughs> you have to learn how to keep like your composure in the moment. So I was just like, oh, okay. But in my mind, I'm like, Jesus, like, golly, <laughs> God. Um, okay. And uh, so long story short, that really took a, took me back. Cause I, I really like looked up to him. And then for him to say that I was just like, you know, just kind of taken back. But so the project ended up still, it didn't even go to him. It went to someone else because I felt so bad. I didn't even want to do it anymore. And I think I'm happy I had that moment because it showed me that like, I don't think I was even ready for that opportunity just yet because it showed me that if that little thing that he could say, cause you know, words of affirmation, if that could deter me from standing my ground and having the confidence in myself, knowing that I can do this, then you can't do it yet. And that it just, for me, it just took re reflecting and just remembering who you are, the gift that you have and being confident in that. So yeah, that's how I dealt with that offense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, it sounds like you've done some growing since then. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Well, I love crazy. That. So if you were to go back to that moment, what would you have done differently? Honey, listen. <laughs> I would be like, you don't know who I am. Okay. I could do this. <laughs> yes. Like... I would be way more confident in the moment and not sheepish, you know for lack of better terms yeah well that's amazing and I can I can see the confidence glowing off of you <laughs> <laughs> and I know yeah. you can the next time somebody says something like listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> right you nice know my words. girl angel <laughs> <laughs> she's not got on her yes, the neck roll. <laughs> oh. you roll your neck. and then talk <laughs> a little ghetto <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't know where I want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, this has been so much fun, Angel. I thank you so much for being on the podcast. Is there anything that you have on your heart that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, just just keep going. Don't let yourself discourage you and don't let people around you discourage you because if you have the confidence and you have the belief in knowing that you can conquer something or you can achieve something, do it. You could do it. And then you have an amazing host. <laughs> She's amazing. And I really love this podcast so much. And I'm just so grateful that you even thought of me to be on. Oh, you're so sweet. Yes, of course. When I heard you're single, I was like, dang. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even hear that you were a film director. I didn't even hear that part. I just heard the music and I was like, wow, this is so good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. A little pop, you know. <laughs> a little yeah. jam. Yeah. Do you have any new music that will be coming out anytime soon? Yes. In the next few months, I have another single and I believe that I'm going to do an EP because we have a few songs that I have under my belt, but we chose to do that one first. So, yes. Yeah. Look forward to the future. <laughs> I love that. All right. So, where can the listeners find you? How can they connect with you? Yeah. Always you can connect with me on Instagram, angel underscore win. I have Facebook, but I don't use it. But that's angel win. I'm angel win on everything Apple Music, Spotify. This, yeah, angel win. I don't have a website or anything. <laughs> If you want to connect with me, like even if it's like on a future project or like editing or anything like that, yeah, you could definitely DM me and then I'll give you my email. <laughs> then well, I'll I got you. too many people in my <laughs> inbox, so I'll give you my email later. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Well, awesome. So how I like to wrap up our episodes is I love to pray for my guests. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. Lord God, thank you so much for bringing Angel into my life. She is such a beautiful light. I thank you so much for the talent that you've given her, the amazing spirit of 
just strength and love mixed together. I, that's what I'm gathering from her. And I thank you that you've done so much work in her life to make her more confident in herself and giving her the willpower and the endurance to keep on pressing forward. I thank you for all of the people that you've placed in her life that have allowed her to be, or that have been stepping stones for her to start gaining that traction that she needs to be fruitful and to start pouring into others. I I pray that you'll bless her career supernaturally in, in the realm of finances, in the realm of opportunities, connections, resources, and bless her whole family tremendously with good health, good wealth, good relationships, and everything in the like. And so I thank you so much for Angel and I pray that you'll bless her this evening and give her great rest because I know she's been working hard. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. If you liked the episode, it would mean so much to me if you shared it with a friend you feel like needs to hear it because everyone deserves to experience growth and freedom. And as for you... I would love to get to know you and hear your feedback on the podcast. So I invite you to reach out to me on Instagram at growing to be Kiani or on the grow to be free podcast Facebook page. And if you're looking for community and connection, join the grow to be free club on clubhouse until next time. See you soon.